This is Adam, and he suffers from gout. Try Urol. It helps to prevent crystallization of uric acid crystals in gout therapy. Urol, effective urinary alkalinizer for gout. Good evening, I'm Camilia and this is Kini News. The Felda debt waiver issue continues today with Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim sending a letter of demand seeking an apology from Muhyiddin within the next 24 hours. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim has issued a letter of demand to former Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin. This is over alleged defamation linked to the Felda settlers' debt waiver issue. According to the letter of demand dated today, Anwar seeks Muhyiddin to make an unqualified apology to be run in newspapers and media of Anwar's choice. Anwar is also seeking a retraction of Muhyiddin's letter of demand to him, as well as the Pago MP's alleged defamatory statements against him. He is also seeking compensation of 200 million ringgit over aggravated damages and for Muhyiddin to pay legal costs. In the legal letter cited by Malaysia Kini, Anwar's lawyers claimed that it was malicious of Muhyiddin to claim that Anwar had not given any response to him regarding the issue of the Felda debt waiver. They said this is as Anwar had made a Facebook post on July 20th with the alleged evidence requested by Muhyiddin. The lawyers also claimed that Muhyiddin had not looked at the Premier's full speech and had purportedly taken the PKR's president's words out of context. They claimed that Anwar's statement was corroborated by Felda Chairperson Ahmad Shaberi Cheek on July 8, which proved Anwar's allegation. Earlier this month, Anwar had claimed that an initiative under Muhyiddin's administration to forgive Felda settlers' debts in 2021 never materialized as there was no allocation in the 2021 and 2022 federal budgets to waive the 8.3 billion ringgit in debt. Muhyiddin had denied Anwar's claims and challenged him to reveal the document he purportedly signed in June. He also demanded an apology, failing which he will sue Anwar for allegedly defaming him. Anwar's legal letter came after Muhyiddin said he had instructed his lawyers to proceed with a defamation suit against Anwar. Muhyiddin had said that the documents released by Anwar yesterday showed he was telling the truth and it was Anwar who had lied and slandered him. Former Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin has instructed his lawyers to proceed with the defamation suit against Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim. This was over Anwar's claims on the debt waiver for Felda settlers. In a statement last night, Muhyiddin said the documents released show he was telling the truth and it was Anwar who had lied and slandered him. Muhyiddin explained that the document is not about wavering Felda settlers' loans and is instead about Sukuk. He added that the Sukuk document revealed shows that Anwar does not understand the contents of the documents he signs as finance minister. He said this is dangerous and questioned what other documents or agreements Anwar has signed in his capacity as Prime Minister and Finance Minister where he does not know or understand the contents. Earlier this month, Anwar had claimed that an initiative under Muhyiddin's administration to forgive Felda settlers' debts in 2021 never materialized as there was no allocation in the 2021 and 2022 federal budgets to waive the 8.3 billion ringgit in debt. Anwar added that he had provided an early allocation to waive the debts in his budget for 2023 and had signed off on the relevant document in late June. Muhyiddin denied Anwar's claims and challenged him to reveal the documents he purportedly signed in June. He also demanded an apology, failing which he will sue Anwar for allegedly defaming him. Anwar was not the only one who sent a letter of demand today. In a speech yesterday, Sanusi said he will send a letter of demand to Saifuddin Nasution over his claims. However, it seems that Saifuddin has yet to receive the letter. Home Minister Saifuddin Nasution Ismail said he has not received any letter of demand from caretaker Kedah Menteri Besar Muhammad Sanusi Mat Noor. Saifuddin said this when quizzed on Sanusi's threat to sue him if he does not respond to a letter of demand within the set time. 
According to the Star, Saifuddin told reporters at the Immigration Day celebration today that he could be approached easily and there was no need to try to get a hold of him at 3 a.m. He said he could be contacted anytime and does not avoid calls. Yesterday, Sanusi said his lawyers will send a letter of demand to Saifuddin today over claims that he had made. According to Sanusi, Saifuddin had allegedly defamed him over the theft of rare earth elements in Bukit Engang, Sikh, and the issue of the 1.6 billion funding from the Malaysian Road Record Information System. Saifuddin was reportedly given a week to apologize and to promise that he would not repeat the statements, alleging that Sanusi was involved in the theft of rare earth elements and had misused state funds. Sanusi had first announced his intention to sue Saifuddin over these two issues last Sunday. The police have confirmed that an object found under lawyer activist Siti Kasim's car earlier today is a bomb. Lawyer activist Siti Kasim has revealed that an object resembling a bomb was found attached to the undercarriage of her vehicle. This was after she sent it for servicing at a workshop in Bangsar, Kuala Lumpur earlier today. In a video on Facebook, Siti said the workshop had called her while she was having lunch after discovering the suspicious-looking device. They suddenly called me uh, and then they say, Siti, what happened to your car? And I said, what happened? Then they say, you think you think it's gamba WhatsApp. So I, I, uh, I look at the WhatsApp photos they sent me. I was so shocked. Uh, they showed me this uh, thing here. It's, uh, you guys sleep. This is my car, okay? Somebody attach. Looks like a bomb um, to my car. Siti said she did not know when the device could have been fitted on her vehicle as it was parked in her condominium all the while. Siti added that she called the police after the find and they arrived soon after. The workshop was then evacuated and cordoned off to ensure safety. It was reported that the police believe the object is an improvised explosive device. Police said the bomb squad managed to dispose of both bottles believed to be an IED and will send them to experts for further analysis. They added that they would conduct further investigation on the matter. Back to Saifuddin, the PKR Secretary General also responded to Hamza Zainuddin in the press conference today. This was over Hamza's claim that he wanted to cancel the PKR party polls, which were held last year. PKR Secretary General Saifuddin Nasution Ismail has denied the claim by former Home Minister Hamza Zainuddin that he had asked him to invalidate the PKR party elections last year. In a press conference today, Saifuddin said he had met Hamza a few times last year for meetings between the then opposition Pakatan Harapan and government representatives, which was not unusual. However, he said that claims that he had sought the invalidation of the PKR election results were Hamza's political statements. With regards to the party polls, Saifuddin said he had only responded to two show cause letters from the Registrar of Societies as Secretary General of the party. The letters were issued after the ROS received complaints from party members on the election. He said he was compelled to reply to those letters within two weeks or risk having the party deregistered. Saifuddin added that if he had wanted to invalidate the elections, he would have done so in his replies to the ROS or would have not responded at all. At a Perikata national rally in Alosata last night, Hamza claimed that a week after the PKR party polls results were announced, he was approached by Saifuddin who had asked for him to cancel the PKR election. This came after Saifuddin lost to Rafizi Ramli in the contest for the PKR deputy presidency. PKR's party polls took place in June last year, while Hamza was still the home minister in the Ismail Sabri Yaakob administration. Sanusi has stressed that he is willing to cooperate with the MACC over investigations into the REE issue. He said authorities could investigate him 25 hours a day, 8 days a week. He also informed them to contact him on WhatsApp if their calls to him go unanswered. 
Caretaker Kada, Menteri Besar Muhammad Sanusi Mad Noor said he is willing to cooperate with the MACC on its investigation into rare earth elements mining projects in the state. He was quoted as saying by Harian Metro yesterday that he is willing to be investigated by the MACC or other enforcement agencies. He added that they could investigate him 25 hours a day, 8 days a week, and can contact him through WhatsApp if he was unable to answer calls. Sanusi said this in response to MACC Chief Azam Baki, who had said that the caretaker Menteri Basar's statement would be recorded to facilitate the Commission's probe into the mining projects. Azam said that 12 people have been quizzed so far and the MACC is also tracking down China nationals involved in the project. He said more people will be calling in for questioning, including Sanusi. The MACC is investigating the rare earth elements mining activities in Bukit Angang, Sikh, following complaints by Kedah Amno, locals and groups critical of Sanusi. Tajuddin will not join Amno's campaign in the state polls. He said this after his four appeals against his suspension from the party were ignored. Amno veteran Tajuddin Abdurrahman said he will not be joining Amno's campaign for the upcoming six state elections. This is as his appeals against his suspension from the party had been ignored. According to Free Malaysia Today, Tajuddin said if they want him to campaign, they need to lift his suspension. He said this is as he can't campaign if he is not a member since his hands and feet will be tied. He added that he does not intend to appeal his suspension again and had decided not to help Amno candidates in the polls. Tajuddin was suspended from the party last October and is currently serving a six-year suspension. He had previously said that his appeals should be allowed and that the decision to suspend him for criticizing the party leadership was unjust. Tajuddin also urged AMNO President Ahmad Zahid Hamidi to lift his suspension to allow him to campaign for AMNO in the upcoming state elections. He added that he had no grudges against AMNO but against certain members of the leadership. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you would like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to MalaysiaKini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.